Hey guys, it's Mastermind2368 here. So today, I'm going to be talking about what it's like to use one of your Ambernic RG Intel, you know, the 35XX Plus H, SP, all those ones, and we'll talk about what it's like to use them docked, specifically with UOS installed. Now, I'm going to tell you already, if you just want to have this docked all the time, get Garlic OS or something. That seems to be a lot better for a permanent docking solution. But MuOS is really great in a lot of other ways, and if docking is not something you primarily care about, then you might be able to get along fine. For this, you're going to need a few things. First of all, and this might be the hardest to get for you depending on your setup, you're going to need a wired controller because MuOS does not support Bluetooth right now. And in the future, I think they have it on their list of things they're going to add, but it doesn't right now. So you'll need a USB controller, if it works with Xbox input, then that's probably good. You're going to need a mini HDMI adapter just for the video output. These are pretty cheap. You're going to need a USB-C to USB-A cable. Something like this would be best. So you're going to have power input and have the controller input. But beware, some of these are pretty finicky. Like this one I got does not work at all. I'm getting one in a couple of days and I'll put that link in the description if it ends up working. For now, I'm just going to use this, the Stonco Jump Gate Dock, but the power doesn't all work on this, so I'm, it'll be fine for the video, but for long term, I want something a little better. And obviously, you're going to need VOS set up on your device if there's a bunch of tutorials on how to do it, so go ahead and do that. But once you've gathered all your things, let's go over to the TV and I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, so to start, we're going to change a couple of things in the config. So go to config, general settings. First of all, we're going to turn on HDMI output. And what I recommend is putting this on 480p. That will make everything scale pretty well for all your systems so you don't have to reconfigure it. Then we're going to turn on device startup. And what you want for this is it to load into some game. So I'm going to do last game. Resume game would probably also work, but whatever you want to do. So last game. And then we're going to plug our device into the TV. So I have my adapter here. I'm going to plug it in and save it. And as you can see, it's on the TV now. But before we just put the device down, we're going to need to change a few more settings. Seems my cable is a little finicky, but just go back and go into a game, any game of your choice. I'm just going to go over, let's go to my favorites, let's do Super Mario World. Why not? Now, from within here, open up the Retro Arch menu and go back. Go over to Settings, go to Input, and change Maximum Users to 2. Once you've done that, go over to Hotkeys and go over to Menu Toggle with Controller Combo. Set this to something you'll remember. I have Start and Select, as you can see. If you'll remember, L1, R1, start and select, do that. I just think start and select is pretty simple. So that's what I've set up. Finally, go to retro pad binds, port two controls. Now plug in your controller. So I'm gonna plug mine in and it should pop up. As you can see, there it is, if it do controller, it's hard to show the controller and that. And from here, you're gonna wanna map your controls. So go to set all controls and Go ahead, set it up on your controller, just follow that if it's not detected automatically. Once you've done all that, we can continue with just the controller. You know, so assuming you set it up right, you should be able to navigate RetroArch now with the controller. And before we do anything else, go back all the way, configuration file, and press save current configuration. The screen will be a little bit cropped off, but it should save just fine if you've not changed anything else. And that will pretty much just save that, hey, you put in your wired controller. Now, you can load any game. We load Super Mario World. But before we play, we need to change settings on a core basis. So, go down to controls. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to port 2 controls. And change it to map port 1. So, I've already changed this for mine. But make sure it's mapped to port 1. And what this is doing is it's saying, hey, port 1, the device, that's mapped to port 1 because we want that to be player 1. But we also want the secondary controller, 
this controller right here to be port one. Once you've done that, go to manage remap files. It'll look something like that. Save core remap file, save the core remap file. And that pretty much saves it for all Super Nintendo games that you load with that core. It will remap this to be port one also. So we can test out Mario World now. Let's see how it works. It's a little hard to show it off, but as you can see, it's working just fine here. It's a little hard to play through looking through the camera, but I mean, it's working just great. So let's say you've been playing Mario World for a little bit and you want to play something else. You cannot go back how you traditionally go back and load it through the file explorer thing. You have to load it through RetroArch. So activate that shortcut you said earlier. I know start and select and just load the content through here. Go back, load content, load any game from any system you want, as long as RetroArch supports it. So I'll go ahead, load PS1 and we'll choose Tony Hawk 2. You'll have to choose your core. Make sure you choose the same core every time per system if you want your settings to save. And in order to begin playing, we're gonna need to do the same thing we did for the Super Nintendo game. So we're gonna go to port two controls, change map to port to port one, manage remap files, save core remap file. And now we should be able to begin playing just fine. Okay, I went ahead and turned off the music because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but as you can see here, it's working just fine. And except for me being bad at the game, <laughs> but that's all you'll have to change. And the best thing is next time you won't even have to change that. You'll just have to load it through RetroArch. And as long as you're willing to put up with that, it'll work fine. Another thing that's probably not too surprising is the analog stick will work fine for your USB controller. So. If you want to play N64 games and the D-pad just isn't doing it for you, you should be able to use the analog stick and it'll work just great. So in summary, yeah, it's possible to play games on your RG35XX Plus with new OS while it's docked. You can do it. If you set it up, it does work pretty decently, but it's not that one-to-one -one experience you get with something like the Switch. If you've decided you want UOS, you like Portmaster, you like the UI, you like the customizability, and you want to be able to do dock, it'll work out for you. But if what you want is docked, I'd say go with Garlic OS. Look at the modified stock OS that might be better for you if that's something you really care about. But I was pleasantly surprised how well it worked. But that's about all for this video. If you have any thoughts, Leave them down below in the comment section if you have any questions about how to do this. If there's something they skipped over, just let me know and I'll try to get back to you. But thank you so much for watching the video and I hope that you have a good day. Goodbye.